Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a scrolling oscilloscope using an audio table. And I get requests for these occasionally. Uh, one of the reasons being that the built-in scopes in Reactor are not so great. They leave a little bit to be desired. So, let's get started. So like I said, I'm going to be using an audio table to store and display our uh, incoming audio stream. And we're going to run the stream direct directly into the output uh, so that we can hear the audio that we're seeing, which is a helpful thing. And then we can run the audio directly into the in input of the audio table as well, which is, of course, the input for incoming audio. So to set our audio table up to record incoming data, we want to give it a table size, which you can do in the properties right here. And I'm going to give our table a size of 441,000 samples, and that's 10 times equal to the sampling rate up in the right-hand corner over here. So we're going to be recording 10 seconds of audio at a time. And in order to record audio into an audio table, we need to have the W input with a value greater than zero. So I'm just going to give it a constant by uh, right-clicking and choosing Create Constant. And let's we'll give the constant a value of one, so it'll always be recording the incoming audio to whatever point in the data we have selected. And the last part of recording audio is going to be uh, using a ramp oscillator to control the right position of our audio table. And it's going to run into the WX input. So what we're going to do to do this is we're going to use the DX output of the audio table to control the amplitude of the ramp oscillator. The ramp oscillator is going to run from 0 to the maximum value of the A input. So in this case, it will be running from 0 to 441,000 samples. Um, and that will supply the index for where we're writing to in the audio table. So next we need to supply the ramp oscillator with a frequency. And the frequency is going to equal um, the sample rate o divided over the number of samples in the audio table. Um, so in this case we'll get a value of 0.1, but I'm not going to hard code those values in. So if you change the size of the audio table, the rest of this project should still work. And then as I mentioned, we'll just run the ramp oscillator directly into the WX input. Okay, so next I'm just going to use a numeric readout module. I'm going to connect it to our structure, which will just turn everything active so it'll actually work. And then we just want to set the whole ordeal into a mono structure. And we can take a look at the panel. So the numeric readout we made can just be turned invisible in the view part of the properties. And then we should change some of the uh, view parameters for the audio table, just because it's a little ugly by default. And get rid of the scroll bars etc. And then you can right click on the audio table and you can get rid of these read and write position markers too which are also a little ugly. Okay so you can see we're recording audio but we're only getting the top half of the audio stream so we just want to set the minimum value of our audio table to negative one and then it'll record all of the incoming values. Alright, so we have our uh, audio table set up to record the incoming data, but it's not really anything like a scrolling oscilloscope quite yet. So what we want to be able to do is to control the 
XO and XR inputs of the audio table, which are used to control the range of the audio dis uh, data that's displayed at any point in time. So we're going to update these values on every display clock. So what I'm going to do is store the value that's giving us the current index that we're writing to, and I'm going to trigger it every time we get a new display clock, which should be around 20 or 30 times a second, depending on what else you have going on in Reactor and on your computer. And we want to give a range value um, and subtract that range value from our current position pointer to get the x origin for our audio table. So I'm going to make a knob and run it into a multiplier, and the knob's going to go from 0 to 0.5, and we'll multiply that by dx, which is the number of total samples we have, and that can be our range. So our range of displayed data is going to be anywhere from 0 to 5 seconds, and we're going to subtract our range from our current right position to get our view origin. And you'll see how this works in just a moment. Okay, so that didn't seem to do anything, and the reason is, is we have this option selected that fits our X origin and X range data automatically to the size of the table. So we can unselect that. And hopefully right away you notice that there's a massive lag happening there. And the reason is this alignment slider here should not be in the center, but should be set all the way to the left. And now we can see... Okay, so that fixed that problem, and I just wanted to mention a few other options you want to have set in the audio table. And one is to have wrap selected and set a clip. Alright, so you'll notice that that was occasionally just displaying dead data. And the reason is when we have wrap set, when we have a negative value set to the X origin input, which will occasionally happen since it can be anywhere from 0 to 441,000, and we are subtracting a positive value from it, so it can go negative. But when we have wrap set, um, it just wraps that value back around to the size of the audio table. And lastly, you might want to turn interpolation on um, if you're going to be using very small sizes for your scope. So there you could just see that with interpolation on, you could get um, a smoother view of the really zoomed in scopes. Alright, so this tutorial was just based on a request I had. If anybody else has any requests out there, please let me know and I'll do my best to turn them into a tutorial for you. Thanks for watching.